All right, so what uh, I'm doing here today is completely taking apart, completely cleaning, um, and basically just completely redoing uh, version 2 gearbox. Uh, this is out of that M4 from the M4 takedown video, um, but I decided to split it into two videos just because there's two kind of different skills um, just to, to work on. <coughs> So the first step here is taking out all of the, uh, the screws around the gearbox. Uh, on this G and G gearbox, there's a total of eight screws. Um, some classic armies, actually most classic armies, and I think VFCs have nine because there's actually two uh, on either side of the uh, where the motor sticks into the gearbox. I've replaced all of my screws. They were. <coughs> They were T2s. I replaced all of mine with Phillips head screws with, from McMaster's. Um, because they're stainless steel and uh, they won't really break. So it's all eight screws removed right there. Uh, there's the little... just point it to the select plate spring. Now here, stick a eyeglass screwdriver in the back to hold the spring guide down so everything doesn't go flying around when you take the, uh, the gearbox apart. It's a 125 spring. Here we have all the components laid out nice and neatly. I'll start pulling these out one by one. There's the uh, cylinder assembly, piston, tap of plate, tap of plate spring, cylinder head, and air seal nozzle. That's the uh, first gear out as a sector gear. Now I'm not really... I don't think I needed to reshim this, so I actually, I'm just keeping the the shims on there as they were, that way I don't have to redo it when I come back, because again, shimming is a related skill, but that'd be a video for another time. There's your bevel gear, and lastly, this spur gear. Uh, let's see, okay. Next here, I'm removing the uh, safety lever on, from the inside there, it's right in front of the trigger assembly. It's a tiny Phillips head screw. There's the trigger. Just got pulled out. This uh, safety lever is kind of a pain in the butt. Next here, taking the uh, spring off of the trigger shuttle. And then removing the small screw that's holding the trigger shuttle in place. And the cutoff lever shortly. Now here, this is, uh, I actually have a three-wire MOSFET attached to that. Um, so if you see some extra wires, that's, that's what that is. And there, there's this cutoff lever. Now, when you take the cutoff lever off, the little spring is um, it's through that little hole right there. So what I'm actually going to do is I always turn the gearbox over and then use the eyeglass screwdriver to drop that spring down under the gearbox so it doesn't go anywhere. Because if you lose that, um, basically selecting between semi and full auto isn't going to work at all. It'll just be kind of random. And there's all the components out of the gearbox. So now we're putting everything back in. Start here with the cutoff lever. And it uses this tiny screw here. There's actually two of these, one for the safety lever and one for the cutoff lever. Um, they're interchangeable, doesn't really matter. Again, tiny Phillips head screw jet, or tiny Phillips head screw. Just make sure it's tight enough that it doesn't, like, wiggle around. There. Make sure it's tight enough that it can't get loose, but also not too tight so that the cutoff lever can't wiggle around at all. Because if you do that, then semi won't work and you might get a catastrophic failure when that piece snaps off and goes flying around in your gearbox. Next in, there's the trigger shuttle. Um, it fits really tightly, so I use a, a eyeglass screwdriver here to sort of press fit it in before screwing it in. There's another little tiny screw. Actually, the comes thing about there's actually three of them. Uh, here, make sure all these uh, wires are press fit nicely into the little grooves that they go in. That way they don't get in the way. Um, again, using my eyeglass screwdriver to do that. And for that wire that's crossing under where the motor sticks in, you really got to make sure that's as flat as possible. 
because if you don't, um, the motor just from spinning will completely erode that wire and you might get a short through your actual gearbox. And it's bad news. Here's the trigger. It's the trigger spring still attached. See there. Um, what I will do is a lot of times the trigger spring is actually way too is pushed uh, bent, I guess, and it's, it applies way too much pressure uh, on the trigger. So it's actually I found it too difficult to kind of put the trigger and keep it in there as is. So I always bend it out a little bit so that it's a little easier to do. You know, putting the uh, trigger shuttle spring back on the post there. Um, if you don't do that, when you pull the trigger, the trigger shuttle will just stay there and uh, you'll have just shooting all the time, which is fun. There's a trigger shuttle lever. This part sticks up through the bottom of the gearbox here and is pushed by the selector plate to get the lever into the, um, the safety position. Because what the lever actually does is pr gets in the way of the trigger so that you can't actually pull it. There's that lever spring. And that drops down over the, the post. And then um, all of it sits inside the gearbox. Let's see up here. What the hell am I doing? I don't even know. Oh, here we go. Trying to get some better light so you can actually see this because this it's kind of hard to explain in words, and this camera doesn't really have a good enough um, resolution. So what you're doing is you're getting that spring to sit around that post, and the top part there sits rests against the inside of the gearbox, and the lever itself, a little arm on that spring, hangs over the lever so that it applies kind of a downward pressure. Just checking it there. Now there, um, you always want to check it because if you have some bigger trigger wires, you can run into a situation where, um, like, you press the selector and it'll get, s and the safety lever will actually get stuck on your wires. There's the less spring to screw into the top of that post, um, and if you aren't careful, you just you'll have to open your gun up again or really wail on the trigger and potentially break something. Yeah, just making sure that safety lever is still moving. Next up here, assuming that your gears have been shimmed as mine are, just put the spur in first, then the sector gear. And then the anti-reversal latch, because that sits under the bevel gear. Make sure that spins, and then the bevel gear goes in last. Now I'm rotating the the sector clip or the sector gear there, such that the sector clip I have on there won't be touching the tappet plate when I go to install the cylinder assembly, because um, it just makes it slightly more difficult. Here I'm lightly greasing both sides of the tappet plate, so it slides a lot easier. As with all things, if you grease too much, it just attracts dirt and kind of counterproductive, so very, very light greasing. So I'm using needle nose pliers to get the tappet plate spring uh, attached to the tappet plate and the little post on the inside of the gearbox that it attaches to. Right there. And I'm using an eyeglass screwdriver to press that all the way down so that it when I'm pushing the gearbox back together, it pulls the tap plate down into the gearbox. Now, lightly greasing the piston rails just to ensure ease of movement. And I use white lithium grease. I don't know if I've mentioned that before for all my um, moving parts. And I prefer to use silicone grease on the on any O-ring parts. So the actual piston head has silicone grease on it. Next up here spring guide and spring. If you're using an irregular pitch, pitch spring, make sure that the the tighter coils there um, are on the spring guide because that will help it compress more 
easily and consistently. There's an eyeglass screwdriver here to uh, push the spring guide in and kind of hold it in place while I'm putting the top half of the gear box back on. This part's always kind of fiddly. Things to look out for if it's not closing. Um, make sure your piston is lined up correctly as in it's it's on the rails and it's not like turned slightly. Um, check all your gears. Check the safety lever right there. Push that back in. Um, use an eyeglass screwdriver. You don't need to worry about really moving things side to side with an eyeglass screwdriver. If, as long as you just press the thing, it's the offending piece straight down, it'll um, right itself. Here, make sure everything's fit right. Uh, make sure the oh, make sure the uh, the air nozzle floats back and forth freely. Uh, screw it all back up. Short quiz. Those of you who've been watching, uh, what have I forgotten to do so far? If you guessed not put the gearbox back in the gun, um, no, that is not it. In the background I also have the movie The Raid Redemption playing, which you guys should watch because it's awesome. But the the original language version, not the dub version, dub version is terrible. Yeah, there's the final piece here that I, I kind of held off to doing last. It's the select the sector plate, the selector plate spring. I use a eyeglass screwdriver to push it aside and back onto both eyes there. And you're just making sure it moves freely. And then you're done. All that's left is to put it back in there. Oh, and testing to make sure the gears are still spinning freely. And there you go. All set. Nothing to it. <laughs>